Hi everyone, it's Maria from Pat and Paradise. Today we're going to be working on my cozy cottage Christmas stocking. And here's what the stocking looks like. And I will take you step by step on how to make the stocking. However, what I'd really like you to think about is use this more as a recipe on how to make a stocking. Every stocking has um, really four sections to it. It has the toe, the main body, the heel, and the cuff. Some are worked toe up, some cuff down. This particular stocking is going to be worked from the cuff down. We'll work the cuff, then start the body, work in the heel, continue working the body, and then add the toe. You can use this as a recipe in that you can change up the middle section, the stitch here in the, in the middle, and really keep everything else the same and have a completely different looking stocking. So let's get started. I'm going to be using the Soft Essentials by Red Heart, which is a number five weight yarn, but really you can use any weight yarn you like as long as you have the appropriate hook to go with it. And of course it'll change the size of the finished stocking, but the process is the same. I'm going to be using it in two colors, the white and pink. All right, so let's get started. Again, we're starting from the cuff. So the first thing we're going to do is create a slip knot, of course. And then we're going to chain 13. Okay. Now the pattern tells you to work in the back bump of the chain. And I'm going to half double crochet in the third back bump. So the back bump is here. It's the ridge along the back of the beginning chain and I'm going to start working in the third one. And then I'm going to half double crochet in each stitch to the end. Okay, here we are at the end of round one, of row one. So now to make row two, we're going to chain one and turn. And now we're going to be working in the back loop only. So instead of working in both loops like you normally would, you're going to skip this front loop that's facing you, and you're going to work in this back loop piece only. And we're going to slip stitch in each stitch. So to slip stitch, you insert your hook, Pull a loop through, but pull it all the way through. Okay, let's try that again. Insert the hook, pull a loop through, all the way through. Now you want to work these stitches rather loosely because as you work for the rows, they become very difficult to work in if you work them too tightly. So whenever you're doing slip stitches as part of um, you know the garment look, you should try to work them a little bit looser than you maybe normally would work another stitch. Okay. Let's see, do I have 12? One more. The last one in the chain, the last chain of the, of the previous row. Okay. Now, for row three, again, we're going to chain one we're going to turn and we're going to work another row of slip stitches in the back loop. So once again, you're going to insert in the back loop, pull a loop through, pull it all the way through. Okay, you see you start to get sort of a ridge that has almost a knit look to it. That's because of the slip stitches. All right, for the next row, row four, again, we're going to chain one and do the same thing. Okay, now for row five, we're going to chain two, turn, and again, working in the back loop, we're going to half double crochet in each stitch. 
Now the chain two counts as a stitch, so we're not going to work one in this very first section here, but we are going to work one right next to it. Okay, you can start to see the ribbing that's being created by the combination of the slip stitches and the half double crochets worked in the back loop. You're just going to continue this through uh, row 36. Um, you're going to continue to repeat rows 5, five 6, 7, and 8. Seven, 6, 7, and 8 are just the slip stitches in the back loop like we did for rows 2 through 4. And you're going to continue that repeat to row 36 and then I'll meet you right back here. Okay, now that you've completed the cuff, we're going to be seaming the short ends of the cuff in order to make it a, a circle that we can continue to work the stocking from. I just want to point out that there is a right and a wrong side to this fabric. The pattern will tell you that the odd, um, the odd rows are the right side. Uh, but the way you can see it visually is if you look at this side, you'll see that the half double crochet rows are actually recessed, whereas the slip stitched um, rows have more of a raised look. This is the right side of the fabric. The other side you can see has a smoother look. You don't see the, the recessed as much. So this is the correct, the right side of the fabric. So in order to join this, you can do it one of two ways. You would bring the right sides of the cuff together like this. And then you can either take a, you know, uh, end your yarn here and take a tapestry needle and just slip stitch this closed and then continue with the stocking. But I like to avoid cutting and weaving and so forth, so I'm going to do everything with my crochet hook. And the way that I do that is that I'm going to insert my hook in the first stitch of the side closest to me. Now we're going to be working in the back loop of the side closest to you as well as the back loop of the side furthest away from you. And the reason that we do that is that on the right side that'll give you the most seamless and visible uh, join that you, that you can have with this ribbed stitch. So I'm going to start right here in my first stitch and first I'm going to bring my loop over so that I have it on the correct side to be able to continue to crochet. And then I'm going to chain one to hold that in place and now, starting in that same stitch that I just pulled the loop through, I'm going to insert my hook in the back loop of the side closest to me and in the back loop of the side furthest away from me. And I'm going to slip stitch through those. I'll go to the next one. Again, I'm working in the back loop of the side closest to me and the back loop of the side, the side furthest away from me and I'm going to pull a loop through, loop through for a slip stitch. Again, back loop of the side closest to me, back loop of the other side, and slip stitch. And so you'll continue to do this to the end and then we can continue working the stocking in the round. And here we are at the last one. Okay, now that we've got that done, let's flip it over. And you can see that by working in the back loops, you have almost an invisible seam there. It's really very difficult to tell that it's any different than the other rows here. Okay, so now this will be the top of the, the cuff here. And this is the bottom part where we'll continue to work the stocking. The rest of the stocking is worked in rounds. But in order to change colors, um, to get a smoother base for our color changes, I like to work the first round of single crochets in the same color as the cuff. And I'm going to be working 28 all around. That works out to roughly three stitches, three single crochets for every four rows of the cuff and then an extra one in there that I'll just tuck in. So chain one work a single crochet in the same stitch and then work evenly across until you have 28 all around. Okay, we're done with the single crochets in the color one and now we're ready to join. So when I join, I'm also going to do my color change at the same time.
So I'm going to insert in the uh, first single crochet. I'm going to pick up my color two, my new color, and I'm going to pull that through to finish the slip stitch. And then I'm going to pull color one tightly to close that up. Okay, now we're going to do a round of single crochet in the new color. And we're going to work that also in the back loop only, and that'll give us a nice little ridge. So chain one and work one stitch in each of the 28 single crochets back loop only. Okay. So again, this was just to give us a nice base to start the body of our stocking. Okay, now you're going to be working the body of the stocking in rounds. However, I am going to ask you to turn at the end of every round. And the reason for that is to create that nice texture that we see in the finished stocking. This nice texture is created by turning at every, at every round so that we have the wrong side on one row and the right side of the stitch on the other, uh, on the other round. And that's the offsetting is what creates this nice texture. So the pattern repeat is a very simple one. You're going to be chaining one and do a single crochet and a half double crochet in the same stitch. Then you're going to skip one and do the same thing in the next. Single crochet, half double crochet. Skip one, single crochet, half double crochet. And you'll be doing that all the way around. And then Okay, and here we are at the beginning. So I'm going to join to my first single crochet with a slip stitch. Okay. Now, in order to do the next uh, round, we're going to chain one and turn. And you're going to be following the same, the same pattern, the same, um, the same stitch repeat. You're going to skip a stitch, single crochet and half double crochet in the next one. Skip a stitch, single crochet and half double crochet in the next one. Basically what you're doing is you're putting your stitches in the single crochet of the previous round. So you can kind of just see it visually and just work that all around. Here we are at the end of the round and now we're going to slip stitch to our first single crochet. Again we're going to chain one, turn, and we're going to skip the first stitch, single crochet in the next, half double crochet in the same stitch, skip one, single crochet in the next, half double crochet in the same stitch. And you can see by doing this we're starting to get that texture that we that we have on the stocking. Okay, you're going to work this exactly the same way for 12 rounds and then I'll meet you back here for the beginning of the heel. Okay, so now we've completed the number of repeats required by the pattern and we're ready to start our heel. So to join this last round before we start the heel, I'm going to do a color change. Now I'm working, uh, I'm finishing up this round from the wrong side of the stocking. So what I want to make sure that I do is that I have my yarn that I'm not going to be using on the wrong side so that'll be easier to hide uh, than from the right side. And the same thing when I pull my new color through, I want to have the raw end on the inside of the stocking. So I pull this to the front, I'm going to insert my hook, pull the new color through, and pull it to the front also. And now I'm going to pull my old color tightly but I'm not going to fasten it off. And the reason I'm not going to fasten it off is because we're going to continue to use this yarn to finish the rest of the stocking once we're done with the heel. So now to do the heel, I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn. So starting in the first stitch here, I'm going to be crocheting 14 along, but I'm going to be crocheting over the color one from the body of the stocking and the reason for that is I want it I want the the color one to be over here when I get ready to continue working on the stocking I don't want it to be on this side so by working over it it'll be in the right place for me when I need it so one two three
And now you can pull this Color One yarn just to smooth it out, but don't pull it too tightly because you don't want this to gap. And just leave it over to the side here while you work the heel. Now to work the heel, we're going to be working a series of short rows, and we're going to be using single crochet and half double crochet to get some of the shaping. I'll show you the first row, and then you're basically going to repeat that same row for the required number of rows. So I'm going to chain one and turn. I'm going to single crochet in the first stitch, and then I'm going to do a decrease. And to do the decrease, I'm going to single crochet two together. I don't like to do my decreases in the first stitch of any row because I feel like it gets it, it looks a little bit wobbly and it's difficult to work into. So I tend to do my decreases in the second and third stitch. So to single crochet two, get two together, you insert in the next stitch as if to complete the single crochet, but don't complete it. Insert your hook in the next stitch and pull another loop through. Now you have three loops on the hook. Pull through all three loops and you've reduced one stitch. Now you're going to half double crochet until there are three stitches left. Okay, so now I have three stitches left. Again, I'm going to do a single crochet decrease by inserting my hook in the next stitch inserting in the next and pulling a loop through, yarn over and pull through all three loops, and then single crochet in the last stitch. So now instead of 14 single instead of 14 stitches, I now have 12. Again, I'm going to chain one, turn, single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet two, two together to decrease, half double crochet until there are three stitches remaining in this row. Do another single crochet decrease at the end here and a single crochet in the last stitch. So keep working in the same manner until you have four stitches left and then I'll show you how to reduce those. Okay, now I have four stitches left. I'm going to chain one, turn. I'm going to single crochet two together two times. So now I only have two stitches at the top here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to be working down the side of these rows and then turn and work all the way around the heel to finish off the heel. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to simply turn, no chain one here, single crochet in the side of this row, one, two, three, four, five, six rows. And then just to finish it off, we're going to slip stitch right in the base of this same stitch. Okay, so now we have the two stitches up here and six coming down this way chain one and turn. And now we're going to work up this way to the two stitches at the top and then work six inches, six stitches down the side of this row as well to finish it off. So we've chained one, we're going to single crochet the six on the side and the two on the top. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the two at the top, seven, eight, and then we're going to continue to single crochet down the side of the rows, one, two, three, four, five, six. And just like we did on the other side, we're going to slip stitch right in the base of this last stitch here. To finish that off. Okay, so now you can see that we have the heel shaping once we fold it. Now we're going to continue working the stocking as we did before. So if you did this correctly, you ended the body of the stocking 
working from the inside of the stocking. So this is a wrong side row. And now you're set to start working a right side row because we pulled the yarn over before we started the heel. What you're going to do is you're going to take the yarn and the stitch where, where it's ending and just pull, the, pull through your loop, chain one, and then starting in the next single crochet. So you're going to skip one, starting the next single crochet, you're going to single crochet, half double crochet. Again, single, half, skip one, single, half, single, half. You're just working around like you did before. Okay, so right now we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve uh, stitches. We're going to work our next one right here in the join of the heel and the stocking. So that's 13, 14. Now we're going to work around the heel in the same pattern. So skip one. and then single crochet and half double crochet, skip one, single crochet and half double crochet, and continue around until you're done with the heel. When you're done, you should have the same 28 stitches that you started with. And let's just check. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. Perfect. So if you have your 28 stitches, join to your beginning single crochet, chain 1, turn, and now you're just working in the pattern again. So continue working in this pattern um, as indicated by, by the, the instructions in the pattern uh, to the toe and then I'll be back here to show you how to finish off the toe. Okay, here we are. So let's review where we are. We've done the cuff, we did the main part of the stocking and then we stopped and did the heel insert and continued with the main body of the stocking. All I've done when I finished those repeats was to do one round of single crochet in color one just again to finish that off and give us a base to start the new color. And then I actually fastened off the yarn here instead of just continuing with uh, join with the new color. And the reason that I did that is depending upon how you work this sometimes you could end up with the seam being you know somewhere in the middle here and for the toe I'd like the seam of the joint to be either here or here. I prefer it here. So I fastened off and joined my new color right back here, chained one, and then single crocheted in each stitch around. So I have 28 single crochets. And now to complete the heel, we're going to be doing a series of decreases. So first I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to single crochet two together for one decrease. I'm going to single crochet 12. And then I'm going to repeat that again. So I'm going to do two single crochets, single crochet two together, and then single crochet 12. So now I've gone from 28 stitches to 26. So I'm just going to join this round. Again, I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do another uh, decrease. And this time I'm going to single crochet two together and then single crochet 11. OK, 
Okay, then I'm going to single crochet two together and single crochet 11. And join the round. Okay, so you're going to follow the pattern instructions, continue with decreases until you have a total of 15 stitches left. And then I'll meet you back here and show you how we close up the stocking. Okay, so now we've finished all the decreases. I've turned the stocking inside out, I trimmed my yarn, and I left a long tail, and I threaded a tapestry needle on the end, and I pulled everything to the inside of the stocking. And the reason for that is we're now going to whip stitch the toe closed. To do this and make sure that you don't have any gaps or pulling, what I do is I flatten out the stocking as if it were hanging, and then I match up the stitches, and then working through both loops of the stitches, I just whip stitch all the way across. And pull it tightly. I actually go across twice just because I want to make sure it's nice and secure. But you don't have to do that. I'm just okay, then you weave in your ends. Snip your yarn. Turn the stocking right side out. And there you have it. So the only thing left to do at this point, besides blocking of course, and I do block my stockings, I just think it gives them a nicer finish, is the, the hang cord. Now you can do it any way you want of course. For this one I chose something very very simple. I simply chained uh, 60 or 65 chains and then working in that back bump I slip stitched all the way to the end, wove in my end so that I have this nice cord. And now I simply take the ends of the cord, put them together, I tie a simple knot right there, somewhere around the middle. Pull that tightly and then I actually just use my hook to pull it through from the outside. It's a little tricky. And then there's your hang cord. Of course, if you're concerned about this pulling through, you can stitch it in place, but I haven't found that to be a problem, unless you're going to have something very, very heavy in it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you'll take this recipe and use it to make your own stockings, design your own stockings with different stitch patterns. Thank you, comment, and subscribe.